In today's video, we'll be doing an in-depth tour of the rooftop, learning a lot about the Spanish culture and history through its walls, as well as finally starting the renovations by isolating the roof and getting rid of the leaks. Hello and welcome back to another video. As I already anticipated in the last one, today we will start La Casa por el Tejado. So first, let's tour the upper floor in depth. First of all, the door is original from the house and very old. This little hole at the bottom is a gatera for cats to move around the house. From this view, you can see the humidities and leaks from the roof that we hope to remove with the polyurethane foam. But we'll get to that in a minute. As most of you already know, this room is called the Camara. It also owes its name to the fact that it was the chamber where people used to store the grain. In this case, in this area that we used to store old toys and junk, basically. Next to the green container, we have El Palomar, a room for birds to live in. They would come to sleep and eat in here and could go outside and fly through the little balcony. Actually, in this region of Spain, some people still practice what we call Suelta de Palomos, an ancient popular sport that dates from the arrival of the Arabs to Spain back in 211. It consists of releasing a single female or male pigeon and then a lot of female or male also single pigeons that will try to woo and take him or her to their palomar. There are even referees who follow the pigeons by car, motorbike or even small planes through the most remote places to see who the winner is. The window balconies are also original and need some repair as they don't isolate the room because they don't have glass in them. To let the light in, they need to be fully open, so a lot of air comes inside. That wall in front of us leads to the patio and terraza. So, if in the future we wanted to let more light in this room, we could open two windows in it. Then, this part is what we called the disaster zone, as it is full of packets for several leaks that we have on the roof. When it rains, you can see the stream of water literally come through like a waterfall. It's crazy. 
The ceiling is totally exposed, so you can see all of its components. On one hand, mud with cañizo. In addition, the beams that surprisingly are from Canada. Apparently, it was very common back in the day to bring wood from Canadian forests to build houses in Spain, as it was very resistant and wood quality. For that reason, the beams are in good condition, but as you can see through the mud, in some places there are holes through where you can see the sunlight, so we need to fix that before it gets any worse. If you can see that space between the ceiling and the roof, my grandmother said that it used to be a hiding place during the war. Actually, after the war, there was a dictatorship in Spain. The government persecuted all the progressive people and they sent them to concentration camps, forced labor and even executions. I highly recommend La Trinchera Infinita. It's a Spanish movie that really re reflects that time period in Spain. It's really good. I think it's on Netflix, so go check it out if you want to delve more into this topic. But let's go back to our house, shall we? As you can see, the floor is really bad. It's in very bad shape. And our grandma always said to walk very carefully through these floors because it was really dangerous. She even used to say that we would fall like in a lift. Even you can see some hints of the history of this house in its walls, literally in its walls. As you can see, we have different dates. You can even see some calculations like additions that we think was for the grain that they used to store in here. <laughs> Okay, just a cultural side note here. Crocodile wouldn't refer to the animal, but to a person who was known that way. In rural Spain, most people were known not for their real names, but for their family apodo. Basically nicknames that would pass down generations. For instance, my grandfather was called Quiki. For the onomatopoeic sound, he used to call his dogs. And now my uncle is known as Quiki as well. In my village, you can hear crazy nicknames, such as Tenedor, Magas, or even Chichen La Olla. My mother dreams about turning this place into an actual livable room or even a separate house to rent as there is plenty of space. However, our tight budget doesn't allow us to make such a big renovation. But who knows what the future holds? As we say in Spain, la esperanza es lo último que se pierde. Over that wall, you can see that black part. It used to be a chimney. And we could restore it and make use of it, maybe in the future. We had an architect and an engineer come over and they told us that we don't need to repair the whole roof as it's in good state. 
However, we needed to get rid of those leaks urgently. We have two options. Taking down and replacing every single roof tile with a new one, which would take us a long time. In addition, it would be hardly impossible to find roof tiles as big, beautiful and resistant as the ones that we originally have. And finally, it would cost us a very large amount of money that we don't have at the moment. While we were discussing how to repair the roof, one of the most virulent torrential rains of the last years hit the region, and we got really scared. Water started to leak not only into the camera but also in the actual livable part of the house, and getting into the walls and ceilings in the living room and bedrooms. If we waited until we had the money to repair the roof properly, the house would deteriorate very quickly and maybe the whole roof would fall apart in one of those violent storms. Repairing those leaks was essential, so sadly we had to go the quick way. That is why we have decided to isolate the roof using polyurethane foam. It was a very hard decision to make, as we loved the original roof tile and wanted to preserve it. But after thinking about it, we really didn't have any other option. For those of you who don't know what this is, it's basically spraying polyurethane foam in your roof to act as an insulator for water, temperature, and filling any gaps. Then they basically paint over the foam with your desired color to make the roof look as close to the original. Okay, so at this point I got quite scared. We were really happy about this process, so we wanted it to look as natural as possible. We chose beige color that looked very similar to the original tile. Here are some pictures of it. However, looking at the paint cans, the paint didn't look like the one we picked. We told the workers that the color looked completely different but they say that once the paint was in the foam, it would look better. And I doubted it, but honestly at that point, we should have shut the whole thing down, asking for our color. But I chose to trust them, you guys, I chose that. It's the work, right? They should know what they're doing. Well, guess what? When the paint was on, it didn't get any better. I was mad and disappointed. We had paid a lot of money for something that they were doing wrong. And yes, the roof was isolated, but the aesthetic part for me is very important. I was already sad to see the original tiles going. So seeing a different color totally threw me off. Once it was painted, they kept saying that once the paint was dry, it would get much lighter. And of course, they took the money and left. That was one of the reasons why we started this YouTube channel. We never wanted to depend on a tiny budget or just one-sided opinions. 
so thank you so much for watching liking commenting and obviously subscribing you are building this dream with us we'll see you on the next video hasta la próxima Thank you.